Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to another walking and talking with uh, me, yours truly. <laughs> so today we're gonna be talking about uh, about Cuba again, all right? In fact, we're gonna be talking about Cuba a lot more in the next uh, probably several weeks and so on and so forth as I start editing a lot of the videos um, that I took um, while I was away, while I was over there in Cuba. So in case you guys aren't aware yet, I'm sure most of you guys are, um, <clears throat> I just came back from Cuba, literally, um, a day ago. And um, wow, <clears throat> what an amazing trip. It was beyond crazy, awesome, and uh, also pretty crazy as well. In fact, um, it was so crazy, I mean, that you know, I, I, I couldn't wait to start making videos um, commenting about you know, the situation out there. And um, that's what today's episode is gonna be about. Now, you're most likely gonna be watching this on Saturday. You probably already watched um, a video of me doing the, the pre-game before I left to Cuba, then celebrating my birthday, and now you should be watching this one, probably by Saturday. And, um, and this is gonna be my first, you know, um, this is, um, I guess my, my first impressions or my impressions of Cuba after I just got back. Now, ever since I got back, um, I, I, you know, I've been talking to family and friends and, uh, you know, just commenting on, uh, you know, the situation out there. And, um, you know, some people believed me straight up, like, oh, wow, it's crazy. Da, da, da. And other people, you know, shout out to my sister, you know, for example. Um, I love her to death, you know, but as I was telling her what I thought, she was like, no, no way, no, really, but like in denial, but she believed me, I mean, in a sense, like, she knew I wasn't fucking around, but, you know, one of the main, main things, you know, one of the most shocking things about, you know, going to Cuba that I, I was not expecting was how similar it was to the U.S., and what do I mean by that? Well, if you guys know me or have been watching my channel for a while already, and know the things that I talk about. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, you guys already know that I compare the U.S. all the time to, you know, communism. And I know that we're still not communist. I know that the U.S. still is not communist, but it's pretty close. It's pretty, pretty close. And to me, you know, it was really eye-opening but let me explain why so like the thing is it's like you know i can talk about the things that i talk about all the time um and um even though i have a lot of context to everything i'm saying you know i, I read a lot of history i read a lot of uh, you know current events i know what's going on i've dealt with government myself um many times in all shapes and forms and um and to me, you know, that's one of the main reasons why I'm living out here in Mexico, because uh, it's that freedom, you know, the untangible freedom that, you know, I'm always talking about and most of you guys know, um, you guys want, but you guys don't know exactly how to obtain it. So, when I got to Cuba, first impressions right off the bat was the fact that how it was so eerily similar to how the U.S. runs. And... I mean, throughout the whole trip, it was nonstop until we literally got off the plane and I got back to Mexico. And uh, by the way, I was kissing the ground when I got to Mexico. I mean, you know, and, and Cuba was amazing. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'm not here to... It was definitely a trip of a lifetime. I can't wait to go back. Definitely worth, you know, going through all that situations, you know. Um, but, you know, again, you know, for, for someone like us, then you know talk about these subjects all the time you know knowing what could be coming to the u.s when you actually go to a real communism like a real 100 percent you know bona fide communism and <laughs> you know you're you're experiencing life out there and you start seeing how exactly the same it is to the u.s in so many ways then all of a sudden you're like wait a minute what the, what the fuck what's going on here and you know, that's the thing, you know what I mean? If all of a sudden you're going to a 100% pure communism because that's what Cuba is, right? Um, and things are pretty similar. And I'm talking about how government is run, you know, how, you know, just just um, how the banks are run, to how, 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 the, how the country is run. That's basically what I am talking about. When, when you realize, like, holy shit, wait a minute, this is the same as the USSA, 
you're like, wait a minute. So okay, I guess we're really not that far removed from communism after all. And so that's the thing, you know, one of the main, you know, takes I got from this trip was the fact that, you know, I say a lot of times that, well, I mean, we already know that the United States is socialist as fuck. Um, a, a lot of us, you know, take it to the next level where I say, like me, for example, and I say, you know, we're borderline communist. I mean, you know, we're just like a few presidents away or a few bad decisions away from pure communism. And, you know, a lot of times I say these things and it's, um, you know, I say it because, you know, I have a lot of basis, a lot of facts, a lot of everything to back it up. But, you know, even myself, I'm, I gotta admit, you know, I, sometimes I'm like, you know, am I, am I, ta you know, am I over exaggerating this a little bit too much? And all, bro, fucking people, you know, well, oh, geez, you know, back in Mexico, and, uh, people, look at this, these people don't know how to drive. Look at this. Look, what's going on here? I need to cross the street without getting run over. All right, I'm just gonna fucking go for it. Anyways. So when uh, when you're when you're actually out there and you start seeing how exactly the same it is, well, <laughs> that's that's the scary part. You know what I mean? That's a real scary part because you know I could I could sit here all day and, and comment on the you know USA, comment on the horrible government, comment you know the, the socialism is turning into communism. You know, do all this shit. You know, all the, all the stuff that we in America you know talk about all the time and we're concerned with all the time. And, and all that shit, but when you again, when you actually go to a real communism and you experience it, and you're like, wait, again, this is so exactly the same. That's really what fucking you know, um, really starts to get you thinking. Now, it wasn't exactly the same because again, one is a communism, and you know, obviously the U.S. isn't communist yet. But what is the U.S.? The U.S. is an oligarchy, and that's the thing, you know, um, in an, in an oligarchy, you know, the corporations are the ones that run the government in a communism it's just a dictator that runs the government but that's it other than that everything's the same you know what i mean like really the inefficiencies of big government um the poor getting poor the rich getting richer only a handful of people have opportunity um every, you know just just everything that you can imagine you know um you know when you're dealing with um you know government officials government anything you know so many things now you know, one of the main differences was the fact that, you know, in the U.S., you got cameras everywhere. You got everyone spying on you, you know, through social media and all this other stuff. Well, obviously, you don't have that over there. But what do you have? Well, you have what they had pretty much in Nazi Germany, what they have in China, what they have in a lot, a lot of other places. But definitely like in, in older versions of, uh, you know, this um, political system, this governmental system. And what do I mean by that? Well, just like in Nazi Germany... Um, you know, there was tattletales everywhere. There were government officials everywhere. There were spies everywhere, no matter what. You know, so for example, we would be going to like museums and things like that, and we had like a million eyes on us. Even though we were allowed to film, even though we were allowed to take pictures, it was a constant struggle. Um, when we would deal with things at the airport, it was a major struggle, just like going in and out of the U.S. Again, you know, like you, you know, as soon as you step back into mexico or vice versa leaving mexico is like you realize like holy shit you know what i mean like wait a minute why are things do not have to be this complicated things don't have to be whatever um for example every time that i went to go change money it was just like in the u.s you know like let me get your passport what are you using this money for who are you what are you doing here blah 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 you know the whole fucking thing let me get a blood sample let me get a year you know it's like you know so many freaking things that were just, uh, you know, scary. And, and again, like not scary per se, because again, I came from the U.S. So to me, I was already used to, you know, having your, the, you know, um, the government's head up your ass. I was already used to a lot of that stuff. Now, sure, I wasn't welcoming it when I was there, but nah, I totally got it. I totally understood it. Um, Christian, on the other hand, she was a little, you know, it was a little harder for her because, um, you know, for her, she's never experienced anything like that at all, period. And that's what made it even more difficult, you know, for her, um, you know, to even like assimilate the situation because she was like, oh my God, this is beyond terrible. And I'm like, man, you think this is terrible? You haven't seen anything yet. You haven't, you know, wait till you go to the US. Where do you, wait till you go to other places around the world where the control is even worse? Because again, out here, 
you know, there's not that much control. There's a little bit here and there, but there's nothing in comparison to what it is in Cuba or the United States of America. Now, I'm here at the OXO. I gotta pay my phone bill, so I'm gonna cut this real quick and we're gonna continue this conversation as I run my errands today, okay? So, be right back. All right, well, all right. Errand number one, take care of. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I'm getting a call, one second. Hello? I swear to God, man, like I immediately just paid my phone bill because I was I had no service and the first phone call I get is uh, an advertisement. Anyways, I love that capitalism. I, do, I mean, I do, I'm just, I just thought it was funny anyways. <laughs> so now, speaking of which, all right, so, you know, I, I'm gonna be talking a lot about my, my Cuba trip and uh, you know, so many things that I experienced out there. Now, I, I took a lot of film, you know what I mean? And pictures and stuff like that, mostly film, because you know, that's what I do and it's like I can't necessarily do both at the same time. So, um, when I was out there, um, I was able to, you know, film um, a lot, you know what I mean? And it was really, really cool. Now, I, I'm, I still haven't even looked at any of the footage. I've shot over 100 plus gigs of stuff, you know what I mean? Plus, again, the pictures. Um, we went to museums. We, we um, you know, we went to a few places to eat. We, we definitely got some rum and, and fucking cigars. Holy shit, man, you know, let's talk about that for a second. The rum and the cigars, amazing. Look, you guys know I don't smoke. I mean, you know what I smoke, you know, but I'm bummed. But I don't, I don't smoke, you know what I mean? I'm not like a smoker or whatever. Um, and uh, I was able to get some, uh, some Cohibas out there and holy shit man holy shit like and I, I smoked that whole thing smooth as butter I'm not a big cigar guy I've never been even though when I used to smoke tobacco and stuff but man what is it it was really amazing and the rum out there another level it was really another level now another thing like the coffee man we just had like a little bit of coffee every single morning and that shit kept us wired all day long that was another weird thing. That was another really cool, interesting thing. The sugar out there was really cool. But again, sugar, coffee, um, tobacco, rum. You know, all these are the, these are main staples of Cuban, you know, the Cuban people and Cuban cuisine and just Cuban culture. So, you know, for me, it was uh, not surprising that these things were extremely readily available, pretty cheap, you know, in comparison to pretty much everything else and beyond amazing like another level of fucking amazing i mean come on uh, I, yeah i mean i don't even know what else to say you just got to go out there and try it yourself um now another thing that i wanted to talk about was the fact that how expensive it was that was another very crazy eye-opening thing for me anyway you know the fact that it was crazy expensive and i was i mean i, I knew it was going to be expensive you know don't get me wrong but things were Miami prices, literally. They were US, you know, Miami, Florida, fucking tourist prices. And, you know, we, we ventured outside a little bit of the beaten path, so we weren't necessarily in the tourist areas all day long every day. But I'm gonna tell you right now, everything was in US prices. And, uh, you know, that's why you see everyone, if you ever go visit out there, you're gonna see everyone trying to hustle and make extra money because, remember, everyone gets paid the same. In fact, how it works out there is like a janitor, you see like maybe or that guy right there cleaning you know, the streets or a janitor cleaning toilets actually makes more than like a, a lawyer or a doctor. And that's just straight up. So, you know, um, communism is a little weird in that sense. You know, everyone kind of gets paid the same. Um, and by what, and how much do they get paid? They get paid around 30 US dollars a month. And again, that would be kind of okay if they were making, I mean, if, if everything cost, you know, relatively close to that, but it doesn't. Again, I just told you everything is in U.S. prices, which is nuts. You know what I mean? That again, <laughs> you know, you only get 30 bucks a day and everything's in U.S. prices. Now, you know, out here, for example, you know, the minimum, minimum wage, like, you know, the guy behind me right to my left, he's not going to be making minimum wage. He's going to be making probably double that. But, um, but still, minimum wage out here is like around 200 bucks. The guy behind me is probably making 500 a month, you know, give or take, maybe less, probably less, you know, maybe three, four. But the point is, is that, you know, out here you're probably making like 200, 250 bucks a month, but you know, your expenses are relatively low. And if you're hustling, you're gonna be making a little more. And again, you'll be able to afford a nice car. You'll be able to afford a vacation. You'll be able to afford, you know, going out to eat and all this other stuff. 
and, me and, and the Cuba not so much I mean in Cuba you know everyone has to hustle and it's like unfortunately the only thing you can really hustle out there is the tourist this is straight up that's the reality of it and um hello and that's the thing you know what I mean like it, it was just um really really interesting you know it really was really really interesting you know like uh, a lot of the dynamic out there how things are now another thing that was pretty pretty nuts and pretty crazy you know was the fact that we just got there and left you know what I mean right before the real beginning of a new special period in Cuba and what do I mean by special period well the last time they had a special period in Cuba was in the 90s and everybody and in the 90s it was uh, pretty much the worst period in Cuban history in the last like hundred years or one of the worst you know with those hunger everywhere and there was nothing everywhere the US uh, I remember the embargo with the US has been going on for 60 years um, Russia you know fell there was no more Russian help or subsidies and there was a lot of um, so yeah next okay so next stop I gotta do is I gotta come back here to exchange some coinage right so I got some extra euros left over from the trip so I can exchange those but you know what do I mean so what, what's what's this special period that's uh, happening right now well, the special here, let me see if I can get more lighting. The special period that's happening now, or that they're about to embark on in Cuba, is literally um, because of the US embargo, the brand new US embargo. Because as you guys already know from watching my episode from last Sunday, my Venezuela episode, which again was a re upload. Um, if you guys know uh, from what I was just talking about Venezuela, well, you know, C Cuba right now is unfortunately. Um, you know, it's dealing with a lot of fuck, it's dealing with a lot of uh, situation because since they are sympathetic to Venezuela, they help Venezuela. You know, they're part of the Venezuelan, uh, you know, um, I, I want to say I don't want to say infrastructure. Uh, they're part of the Venezuelan uh, um, coalition or whatever. You know, again, Russia, China. There's a lot of other countries that are involved in this. But what I'm what I'm saying is the point I'm trying to make is the fact that. Um, you know us the us has like put some even stricter embargoes on cuba and in fact trump has said this you know he said this that now cuba is going to suffer and they're going to suffer hard for even helping venezuela for even being a part of uh, being helping venezuela so even though venezuela is still constantly sending oil you know to um to cuba because that's where cuba gets all their oil you know cuba sends doctors and sends uh you know supplies to venezuela and venezuela sends them oil you know, and that's literally like the trade that, that goes on there all the time. But if all of a sudden the United States of America is patrolling, is patrolling um, the waters, you know, which are the Caribbean, you know, which is, the, you know, the only way in which, um, you know, the only way in which they can get supplies from Venezuela to, to Cuba, you know, is through shipping. Um, you know, what the U.S. is doing is that they're literally blocking the oceans. They're literally not allowing tankers. They're not allowing ships to, you know, make these... Uh, these um these deliveries and so, so even though venezuela is still sending them oil you know the oil can't get there and so now there's an oil crisis you know there's a gasoline prices in uh in in cuba so what does that mean well it means the fact that you know now all of a sudden in cuba nobody can um can access gasoline or oil and what and that means everything so remember everything runs on on you know this oil that you know we use for every single thing that we take for granted because when we turn on the lights and turn on the electricity you know we just think that that's i don't know where you guys think it comes from but it comes from again from oil or coal or nuclear or something like that and um you know unfortunately the only option really that cuba has is uh you know through oil you know so they use oil you know petroleum you know in order to power the the, the country power the city power factories power museums you know power the, the cars the infrastructure the whole thing and so now you know they're they, they were they're going through a crisis and it was just the very beginning of the crisis the crisis that only started like i want to say three weeks ago now it's about three weeks since the crisis has started but you know right now in cuba you know for, on top of all the crisis that they're already having now they're having this this crisis and it was really brutally um visceral to see you know all the people on the street all the lines of people trying to get to buses or transportation seeing how the police had to um enforce you know these laws of transportation meaning that you know they had to stop buses and cars and force you know enforce them to stop so they can transport people so like if they see you in a car driving and you only and this is not for tourists only for locals but if they see you in a car driving and there's like an empty seat in that car a police officer will stop you and force you to pick up a hitchhiker or someone at the stop or whatever and take them 
you know, in the direction you're going. Not take them to where they need to go, but at least take them in the same direction and so on and so forth. So, you know, there's a lot of things like that. Another one of the things that was uh, also visceral and very, you know, right in your face, you can't really avoid is the food situation. You know, sure, for tourists is a little different and there is stuff out there, but for the most part, even as a tourist, that is also very limited. And, you know, for example, the first thing that, you know, when we first got to Medina, we were starving to death, literally. And, um, you know, I go to Chris, Christian, hey, so what do you want to eat for dinner? You know, what do you want to eat for dinner tonight? She goes, I don't care. I just want meat. All right, all right. Insert joke here. But r really, you know, she just goes, I just want meat. And, uh, you know, we just ended up going to like a local joint. And, uh, you know, we had a few beers. You know, we had, you know, all kinds of tapas and food and everything. And it was only for the both of us. It was like, um, I want to say under $10 or so between eight to $10. While we were in Cuba, you know, we would go to like a house, you know, literally a house, you know, um, the paladards, you know, which is like, you know, when you go to a, a person's house and eat in their house and, you know, do that whole thing, which was the cheapest option available. And there it was minimum $10 per person, 10 US dollars per person, not including tip and not including other amenities. So, and, and, you know, the cheapest meal that we had was around 25 US dollars. And we were not full, we were not anything. And again, here, you know, we were so stuffed that we could barely walk home for eight to $10. So, you know, it's just things like that. And like, do you think that the, the typical Cuban, no matter how much resource he really has, can afford that all the time? I mean, again, if you can't barely afford it back in the US, you know, to eat like that all the time, imagine in Cuba. So I'm gonna tell you right now, you know, it was a very, very eye-opening and all that stuff. So. All right, guys, I'm going to go and exchange some money and uh, I'm going to finish this video on the last errand I got to run. OK, and we're going to wrap this up. All right, guys. So, uh, yeah, you know, I uh, hope you guys are enjoying today's episode so far. All right. I know you guys always are. If you're watching already this deep, if you're still watching and then you're definitely enjoying it. All right. I'll be back. All righty. Well, I'm on my way to my last destination. Let's uh, wrap this up um, so I can finish this video. Right. Um, but yeah, so, you know, there's so many, so many, so many things that um, I can't wait to talk to you guys about and tell you guys about and share, you know, videos and pictures and, and all that stuff because, you know, even though I have a lot of videos in which um, I recorded there and I'm going to be, you know, I've, and I talked when I was there and all that stuff, you know, I also have a lot of footage, like tons of footage. So I'm probably also going to be, you know, just, uh, you know, doing um, some sort of uh, video where I'll be talking, you know, either walking and talking or some sort of, uh, you know, talking in front of the camera at home and then, you know, add a lot of other footage, you know, from my Cuba trip, you know, so a combination of that. So I got a lot of stuff because, you know, the, you know, there's a few, so many things that I want to talk about, you know, like the weather, for example, it is like 10 billion times hotter here than in Cuba. Cuba was so nice. The weather was very nice. So, you know, the weather was great. And the people were beyond amazing, beyond amazing. The art, amazing. The culture, amazing. Everything was amazing, 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 amazing. Definitely, definitely um, trip of a lifetime. And again, I can't wait to go back at some some point in the future. Um, and hopefully, you know, again, things do change for the better. And I hope that this situation that's happening now with the oil and the extra embargo that the U.S. is uh, throwing to these guys is uh, not something that... It's not something that's going to be, you know, um, too damaging to what's going on over there now. Because, again, you know, Cuba was, uh, you know, making a lot of strides in the positive direction. And now because of this, um, you know, this other situation now, it, it, it could be very damaging and very no bueno. So just hoping that, you know, that doesn't, you know, the whole oil situation um, gets better before it gets worse. But, you know, at the end of the day, guys. Um, there's gonna be a lot of videos coming your way you know I'm definitely you know what I mean I'm still gonna be making many the videos I'm still gonna be making all kinds of videos like I always do you know but I there's just so much to talk about now especially in the videos that I make you know the political videos or the videos you know talking about you know just commenting on all the other things that happen you know in life and uh, not life I'm sorry that are happening around the world and all that stuff you know now I have so much more context you know um, so much more knowledge you know, that it's going to really, really, I think, make, uh, you know, my content even better because, it, 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 again, you know, it's just one of those things that you have to experience, especially if you're, you know, one of the one of the many Americans or many people around the world that are very concerned with a lot of the situations that are happening around the world right now. You know, um, 
it's just very 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 telling you know um it's very interesting that's for sure look at this i miss this so much so so good so good i can't man i literally kissed the ground when i got back to mexico i mean for reals i'm, I'm so happy out here so happy in merida it's it's beyond incredible but yeah guys all right a lot of action going on here at the hospital today huh anyways so yeah guys you know thank you so much for you know for joining me today i really appreciate you guys you guys are the best i can't wait um to continue making um all these videos um and as the weeks come as the days are coming and it's going to be very 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 interesting that's for sure you know to to hear you know what you guys have to think you know what you guys have to say about these things what you guys have to um you know um comment on all the things that i'll, I'll be talking about as well because it's um it's really cool you know the last thing i want to say was the fact that you know i'm going to be making a lot of uh, videos you know talking about the truth about what's happening out there the reality about what's happening out there and i was already warned you know by you know friends and family to not do that but i have to do that you know what i mean like i really have to do that you know what i mean because you know one of the main things that i i gathered from uh I'm from cuba was the fact that first of all what they tell you is one thing and what the reality is is something completely different you know just like mexico why i make these videos that's number one number two as i was trying to do as much research as humanly possible to you know have the best possible outcome in cuba there were so many things that were just not told to me at all or anyone out there and there's no one out there you know making videos or talking about these uh, particular uh, subjects or situations that you're going to encounter when you're out there so you know to me i gotta make those videos because somebody has to because i'm gonna tell you guys right now when you guys visit out there i mean it's it's such a shock in so many ways and it's it's good and it's actually you know not that easy it's actually pretty difficult to get in there get out the whole thing it really is but it's totally worth it it's a million times worth it and i think that's what happens to a lot of people that visit cuba is that the the experience of being there is so beyond amazingly great that no one talks about the negative things you know what i mean and again these negative things have really nothing to do with the people per se it has to do with you already know what and since you know these are the things that we talk about on our channel all the time then you already know i'm gonna fucking put them together and uh we're gonna add two and two together and uh um, see if we can get these equations uh knocked out but anyways guys all right i'm here at my other errand i still got way more errands to run but um yeah I'm sweating to the oldies that's for sure guys thank you so much for joining me today don't forget to please like please subscribe please share please hit that bell icon don't forget to you know just continue staying awesome and um i want to say thank you to all my patrons say thank you to everyone out there you know sending all kinds of love you know um all kinds of um help you know what i mean whether again you know a, a thumbs up goes such a long way sharing the video goes such a long way leaving comments every single thing is is such a major boost to my channel and uh and again the more um this channel grows well the more people get to see this stuff and they get to have access to a lot of this knowledge so please you know just if you enjoy this stuff you know don't just watch it and hog it for yourself you know um help others find it and help me you know um find other people to to, to watch me and all that good stuff because um yeah i mean as far as i know you guys are telling me i'm making good stuff so might as well share it with the world right all right guys enough I gotta get going. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Peace out. And I'll see you guys manana. Have a happy rest of your weekend. Peace.